Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Thumb, as Dick mentioned, and I'm excited to be here today to uh, talk to you a bit about the Footprints Asset Core Solution, uh, which really provides end-to-end -end asset management. The, uh, the first thing I'd like to discuss uh, very briefly in the slides here is the architecture. Uh, the Footprints Asset Core is 100% web-based. Uh, all the communication between any of your endpoints, be them workstations, uh, laptops, or servers, uh, is done so over HTTP protocols, uh, very secure. Um, and that includes then as well uh, the console-based activity, so your technicians out in the field, your technicians uh, at various locations throughout your organization can from any browser initiate and uh, instantiate the asset core console to be able to work on, look up, report against, and or manage any of the assets under control. Uh, we leverage what we call a relay architecture, which makes it a very scalable solution. Uh, the install itself is extremely fast uh, to perform. The install might take uh, 30 to an hour, uh, 30 minutes to an hour to get laid down. And the relays then are how we're able to manage hundreds or thousands of devices. Uh, we do have customers with uh, you know as little as 100 or 200 nodes under management. Um, but we also have customers with over uh, 30 or 40,000 nodes under management. And these relays can be servers, uh, but they can also and mostly are workstation class devices. Whether it's uh, you use a dedicated back or uh, an existing back office device, maybe a domain controller in multiple locations and throw my agent on it to tell it to be this relay, uh, or you dual purpose maybe a receptionist desk. Um, it can be a Windows 7, XP, really doesn't matter. The purpose of the relay is simply to gather all the communication from all the endpoints at a particular location uh, and send that data up through a single communication point that we allow you to uh, limit or control uh, the amount of bandwidth that my product utilizes. And the goal here is to allow us to manage multiple devices, again, thousands of devices uh, across the globe without uh, worrying about the bandwidth consumption or the network connectivity between those sites. Uh, it's all our own technology. We're not reliant upon any existing services on the device. Uh, and again, the traffic is all HTTP. Uh, this means you can secure it. You can encrypt it. Um, you can put a certificate on it. And we even have what we call a service anywhere capability, which allows you to manage your devices, whether they're on-premise, on-network, or uh, when your laptop user goes home, and plugs in or they go to the Starbucks or they're a salesperson or something and they go to a hotel. Um, we do have the capability of remote controlling that individual, pushing software to that individual, making sure they're patched so that when they do come into your network, uh, they're where they need to be from a security and compliance perspective. Uh, very, very cool technology, very, very efficient, and again, 100% web-based. Now, when you talk about asset management, the first thing customers typically think about is uh, you know, the, the, the life cycle. Um, this includes the, the purchase, the warranty and support, everything you see here on this slide. Who owns it? Who uses it? Who may be logged in at any point in time, even though they're really not the owner? Um, and this also plays very nicely into what Dick mentioned with regards to the, to the magic wand uh, to help you front load some of these things at time of purchase. So uh, what we do offer is a depreciation schedule as well keeping track of, uh, you know, the, the value of a device and the role of value of a device, whether you buy it or you lease it. Uh, and this occurs, and is, we're capable of doing this not just for your hardware, uh, but also for any software packages that you license as well. And I'm going to show you a little bit about that here in just a moment. Uh, the second thing that uh, we consider to be core and fundamental to our asset management and desktop management strategy is, uh, again, the end-to-end -end management capability. Uh, and as you can see from the slide, and I'm, I'm going to spare you uh, reading it, I'm sure you guys can all see this, uh, we do have about uh, 13 distinct product pieces of functionality built in uh, to our asset core. It's a single agent that we deploy, so it's not as if uh, if you buy one thing one day and another piece uh, a month later, that you have to worry about another deployment. Uh, it's all a license key that enables or disables the functionality at your endpoints. Um, the agent itself is very lightweight while I'm on this topic. Typically, it's using about 20 megs of memory resident uh, on the device. So regardless of uh, how beefy your endpoint is, we are capable of managing it. Uh, and our single agent runs as a single process with a single service. And we support your Windows, your Macintosh, and your Linux devices 
as well as some um, subset of functionality on your Unix-based devices. Uh, it begins, of course, with your discovery, um, deploying your OS, the software that goes based on who they are and where they reside. There's a security aspect to it that I'm, I can speak to a little bit as well. Um, the management capabilities, and this really speaks to kind of how it integrates with uh, our Footprint Service Core offering, uh, or Remedy Force here in the very near future, uh, to allow you to remediate and or troubleshoot a, a ticket direct or uh, an asset rather directly from uh, your service desk uh, choice of products. Uh, and then lastly, of course, the disposal. Uh, unique value proposition that Footprints brings to the table once again is uh, that uh, when you're talking about the Footprints product line, uh, there is the asset core that I'm focusing here on today, but as Dick mentioned, we also have our service core. Uh, and the service core is, is essentially the functionality you're familiar with from an STE perspective or a, a Remedy Force or a Remedy perspective uh, for the mid-market. Uh, it gives you an extreme amount of capability, flexibility, again, 100% web-based, and the integration between it and our asset core is built in. Uh, simply having them both installed in your environment uh, and pointing each one to the other with regards to the computer name and the port that it's listening on immediately invokes all the integration that we offer. And the integration that we offer, again, out of the box is, is beyond what we consider data level integration, which is what most IT organizations um, end up with, uh, which is typically uh, pick a user, and based on that, it populates the asset data. Uh, now, whether this is extremely useful, so I can uh, look at historical tickets against that asset, um, you know, we've been doing that uh, at Numara and LBMC for, you know, uh, over a decade. So what we've done is, is now introduce what we call process level integration, the ability to, from a ticket, invoke a piece of software that invokes a piece of workflow that kicks off an approval workflow. And based on that approval coming in, whether it's through email or the web or what have you, uh, that package can automatically be then deployed down to the asset. And the history of the service core ticket uh, is indicative of this, showing the request, the approval, the deployment, the success or failure, and the inevitable closure of that ticket. Um, so very, very powerful story there where the integration is concerned. Um, you know, as uh, BMC, uh, Numara is a newly acquired organization into BMC, uh, we are working very diligently to uh, bring that level of integration across our product sets. Um, but again, it's, it's a clear value, a clear win for uh, Footprint's customers. And, and as you can see here, the asset core has the modules on the right-hand side. Um, inventory is very straightforward. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Our compliance piece is extremely powerful. Um, and then, of course, the other management aspects uh, with regards to software deployment, OS deployment, remote control, patch management, vulnerability scanning, uh, and migration management, which is essentially taking someone's personality uh, with regards to an OS migration and ensuring that when they go from XP to Windows 7 or you re-image their device because it's, it's beyond repair, uh, that when they log back in, their pictures, their documents, their music, their videos, all their settings for their Outlook, and et cetera, are right where they left them. Um, so your end users just don't skip a beat uh, and are very happy then with, of course, you all being their uh, service test provider. Uh, with that, I'm ready to uh, move into the demonstration. Um, if you have any questions, by the way, I encourage you to enter them into the Q&A window uh, within the WebEx presentation, and we will have a small portion here at the end uh, to address those. What you're looking at now is what we call the Asset Core console. Um, to access this, there is an install you can, you can uh, place on your desktop or laptop. Uh, and again, this is, uh, you can launch this from a Mac, uh, a Linux, or a Windows device. Um, you can also pull up a browser window and type in a URL, and it will launch this in memory as well if you're on the go and need to access your data. Uh, it's all 100% roles-based. There's a variety of roles you can define. You can also synchronize these roles with your Active Directory. Uh, allowing people for a single sign-on capability. Uh, and then based on the group they belong to, they will have a predefined set of roles and responsibilities. So someone who's an inventory administrator may be able to perform uh, this subset of functions. And you can also limit not just the functions they can perform, but the objects they're able to manage. So you may have somebody who's responsible for servers, another group responsible for desktops and laptops. My product lets you define groups uh, distinctly for those business purposes, such that when they log in, they can only do what they're allowed to do against the devices they're allowed to, to do so against. Another aspect I like to point out is also our transfer windows. 
Our transfer windows are the management of the bandwidth that we discussed, uh, whereby every hour of any day you can restrict the amount of bandwidth my product will utilize, again, making it a very scalable and safe solution to deploy within your environment. Um, the, when you talk about asset management, the first thing I typically talk about is our asset discovery. Um, the asset discovery is capable of discovering anything and everything with an IP address. Uh, as you can see here, we're, we're finding um, switches, routers, phones, uh, workstations, laptops. We also are able to discover both your virtual and your physical devices and how all of that is interconnected. So if we take a look at what we refer to as our connectivity topology, once I launch and configure the asset discovery, I end up with something that looks something like this, which essentially is my entire IP-based infrastructure and how they are all interrelated. So this might be a switch, and on the switch resides my endpoints. This may be a virtual host, and on it resides some virtual guests. If I want to drill down into a particular switch, I can at a very high level understand that uh, it's a switch. I think I saw it was in Houston. It's a 3Com. It's Mac and IP. I can drill down then as well into the, what we call the physical connectivity topology to see which devices are connected to which ports on that switch on what type of devices they are. So that's a very, very powerful aspect uh, that we begin with. And everything that we configure within this product, including our asset discovery, we do so through a wizard-based approach. Uh, Numara now BMC's uh, core value proposition to our customers is that everything we develop, everything we provide will be very easy and simple to use while providing a, a good and fair amount of functionality. Um, so along that vein, as you can see, I can define when I'm configuring a discovery which machine is going to perform the scan, what type of protocols and devices I expect to find, uh, and therefore, here are my credentials, my communities, my um, MIBs, whatever they might be to understand and enable and capture um, all this information you see here. Now, once we understand the devices that are out there, we typically uh, want to begin to define our relay architecture. And then we run through what we call our agent rollout wizard to deploy our agents out to those devices. What you're looking at here is a representation of the architecture. While this might be a server that's managing my, my Americas, I have uh, maybe location A, location B. I can see the devices that are connected to these relays and how they're communicating back into my environment, keeping in mind that in between any given uh, relay and its server, you define what we call, again, that transfer window which is managing the bandwidth between uh, all your locations. I also mentioned we have this Service Anywhere capability. Uh, the Service Anywhere capability only requires that you have a relay, as we refer to it, uh, in your environment with a public IP address. And in doing so, uh, if one of these laptops is over here in location B and suddenly goes home, when he starts that machine up, it will attempt to communicate with his internal server, see that it's not available, and then report directly into that public realm so that if you begin want to take control of them or patch them or something along those lines, the master can instruct that agent to create that tunnel back in your environment to perform that management connectivity, again, without VPN connectivity. So that's a very, very powerful aspect of the product as well. Uh, and then the other way to view and manage your assets is by your IP addresses. Um, and keeping in mind as well that different people use this product to manage different types of devices for different reasons. So while this is how the product is laid out, you are also able to group your devices any way that you see fit. I can look at them in list form, or I can look at them in a graphical fashion. And these device groups, as we say, are your, your, your management points. They provide point-in-time reporting capability, uh, point-in-time rule assignments, all based on the rules that you define. 